once before. Yes. Um, we feel that maybe it's getting buried a little bit. Sometimes, you know, sometimes people talk first about what's most important, and we, we're not hearing a lot of talk about the climate crisis in general sometimes with candidates. Mm -hmm. So we were at an event with you a while ago, and one of our friends asked you, would you make climate your number one issue? And you said yes. it is your number one issue. Is. Can you talk about that? Yes. So I believe that global climate change is the greatest threat to humanity that exists today, and the proof of it is in Iowa today. I went and toured the flooding uh, in Western Iowa, and I can tell you, it was devastating. I saw these families whose homes were destroyed. I, I went to one family's home, uh, Fran and Jason, and saw their home, and it looked like the house was shaken to the core. Every piece of furniture was upended. The refrigerator was torn out of the kitchen. Mud rose throughout the whole house. It was 10 feet of water. That is what global climate change does. Severe weather comes more and more often. Not only do we have droughts in Iowa, but then it's followed by flooding. Your last big flood was in 2011. Now it's 2019. I promise you, your next big flood will be sooner than the last one. Because that's what the impact of global climate change is. So I believe in the Green New Deal. Because the fact is, it's an aspirational goal that we need to try to reach. As I said earlier, John F. Kennedy said, I want to put a man on the moon in 10 years, not because it's easy, but because it's hard. He did not know if he would get a man on the moon in 10 years, but he knew it was an organizing principle. He knew it was the thing that they would compete against. They'd compete with Russia to be the first one there. It was the space race. So why not create a green energy space race? Why not compete with the Chinese to say, we are going to be the first country to get to net zero carbon emissions? We're going to be the first country to figure out how to have renewable energy sources, whether it's wind, solar, geothermal, hydropower, or biofuels. We're going to be the greatest engineers and scientists on the planet. They're going to figure out how to have energy efficiency and new energy sources. Why not inspire every kid in America to want to be that engineer or scientist or mathematician who's going to figure it out? And the nice thing about the Green New Deal is a platform of ideas, all of which are already bipartisan. Infrastructure green jobs, and clean air and clean water. And that's it. That's all that's in there. So green jobs. We know that if you teach young kids STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, they will be poised to be the inventors and innovators of the future. We know that if you guarantee clean air and clean water, it's going to help Iowans because, honestly, you've got issues with nitrates because of farming, and those farmers have no resources to deal with that, so you need to be able to provide that to guarantee every time you turn on a faucet that the water's clean. It doesn't have lead or nitrates or PFOA or PFAS. To know that the water that you're bathing your children in, cooking your food in, is clean and safe. And last and most simple infrastructure, Every state in America wants infrastructure. We want to actually fund a new electric grid. We want to fund mass transit. We want to fit, fund roads, bridges, sewers, high-speed rail, rural broadband. It makes sense. It's the greatest economic engine. So why not do all those bipartisan things with your ambition of net zero carbon emissions? And we don't know if we can get there, but why wouldn't you try? And the one thing I would do is add putting a price on carbon, because you want to use market forces as the way to actually create competition and use those forces to drive down costs. If you provide a lower tax rate for innovation and for um, industries that want to be green and efficient and create a higher tax rate for those that are going to pollute, money will flow towards the innovators. So I, I think we need to do this because if we don't, we will see mass flooding, we will see more wildfires, we will see more death. It is something we must do. Cheers, thank you. Mm -hmm. I We're the only federally recognized tribe in the state of Iowa. Um, I climate is huge. Your number one issue. Yes. Absolutely. And I know last month you spoke with both Iowa supporters and uh, said that you would make climate. My number one issue. And I would love if you came out to the Muskwaki Settlement and spoke to that the people. That would be an amazing opportunity. I would love to do that. I would love to Can facilitate you help me that. that. Yes. Well, let me get Laura. Get Laura. I'll 
I would love to talk to my state director. So we'll be here so much, and I'm going to bring my kids out this summer, and they would love to be here. Yes, and we have a powwow. We have an annual powwow. What is your powwow? Usually the first weekend in the month of August. The hottest time of the year. That's when I'm going to have the kids. That might be great. So she would like us to go see the Missoula community. Missoula? settlement. Great. And the last collection, the first week of August, they have their powwow. Our annual powwow. And it'll be the 103rd. Can non-tribe members come? Yeah, absolutely. Everyone is welcome. Oh, that's exciting. I could take Henry to that. Yeah. I would love for you to come out and visit. The last election cycle, there was only one candidate out of everyone that could stop Well, I would, like to, I would be honored to come. I would truly be honored. I'm and I'd so love to bring excited. my children. I would love to meet them.